Recently there has been quite a hype about this ESP8266 Wi-Fi serial module on Hackaday. And it is totally reasonable. I mean just $5 for a Wi-Fi module which works easily with an let's say Arduino is way cheaper than an Arduino Yun or other Wi-Fi shields. So I went ahead and bought three of those quite a while ago. And today I will show you what they are, what they can do and how to handle them properly. Let's get started. Firstly, let's talk about the board itself. As you can see, mine has a small antenna on the PCB. But by now, there already exist 5 variations of this board. And most people seem to prefer the board number 3. But why do they not like the first version that I have? Well, it is still all the same hardware. But there are more GPIOs available as a breakout. And this can be really useful in the future. Because they recently released their SDK for the board which means you can build your own firmware, which makes it possible to use those GPIOs for example just like you use your Arduino pins, which makes an external microcontroller unnecessary. And that is awesome. But that is not the main focus now. As you can already tell, those pins are not breadboard friendly, which is kind of annoying. So let's build a homemade adapter to change that. I got myself a perf board with copper dots and used a utility knife to engrave a square of 4x4 dots. Afterwards I used a saw to cut the board. Now I also need male headers and female headers. Each of those must have 4 pins in a row. When I finished those it was time to solder. I started with the female ones in the middle. Afterwards the male ones on both sides. And I know that this is a delicate solder job. But it worked out somehow. Now I just connect the female pins to the corresponding male ones. And it is done. Super cheap and effective. Ok, now let's take a look at our pins of the board. Downright is VCC. That means it connects to the plus terminal of a 3.3V power source. 5V kills it, be careful. And it can draw around 20mA up to 250mA. Make sure your supply can handle that. Up left is ground, which connects to, well, ground. Up right is the receive line which connects to a transmit line of our controlling unit, like the Arduino or an FTDI breakout. And down left is the transmit line which connects to the receive line of the controller. There are also two GPIOs, reset and chip power down. There are people who say to connect all four of those to VCC during normal operation. But it worked fine for me when only chip power down connects to it. Ok. Let's hook this thing up to my FTDI breakout and test it. But wait, this thing works with 3.3 volts, even the receive line, so our 5V signal of this chip can destroy it. Let's build a simple voltage divider with a 1K resistor and a 2K resistor. This way our 5V changed its level to 3.2V, which would work fine. I hooked everything up like I described it before. Now I start the Arduino software and use the serial monitor. I set the baud rate to 115200 and now I fire up my board. And it says ready. Awesome. I can communicate with it via simple AT comments, which you can all find on various sites. Firstly, let's check the firmware with AT plus GMR. This one seems to be version 0.9, which is not the newest. So let's update it with a custom firmware, which even allows me to change the baud rate. Firstly I have to connect GPIO0 to ground. This brings the board into the update mode. Then I downloaded the firmware and the necessary software. I choose my serial port and check whether the connection was successful. Then I use the new firmware to flash the board. And that's it. And don't forget to remove the wire between GPIO0 and ground when you are done. I opened the serial monitor again and changed the board rate to 9600. Now everything still works fine and the update was successful. At the end let's try to connect to an access point. I set the module to Wi-Fi mode 3. This way it can act as an access point to create for example a TCP UDP server and can also connect to the internet to grab data from a weather station or act as an internet of things device. I searched for access points and definitely found quite a lot of them. 
minus Xander and I just enter this SSID and my password to connect with it. When the connection was successful, I can find out my IP address with this command. And this is the time to think about awesome projects with this. I already have seen a weather station, an email notifier or an online LED dimmer. I put all the links to different awesome projects in the description below. And also all the links to useful sites for this little device. I hope you enjoyed this first introduction to this Wi-Fi module. Let me know what you want me to build with it. And as always, stay creative and I will see you next time.